Hi there, it's Kelly, your tech savvy business mentor. And this week, I want to talk about one of Trello's power ups, uh, one that they actually put out themselves, and it's called Dash Cards. So if you've been hearing about it and maybe you haven't tried it out yet, or maybe you've just noticed some of these cards at the top of my list and kind of wondered, you know, what is that? How does that work? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today, the Trello Power Up Dash Cards. So stick around. So before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. I post videos every Friday teaching you how the online tools for your business do not need to be complicated or overwhelming. Okay, so first things first, let's just refresh on how to add a power up to a Trello board. So what you're going to do is click on power ups. And if you have none, then you're going to click on add power ups. Your, your uh, list here will look very different. You're just going to click on add power ups and it's going to take us into basically the power ups catalog. And you're going to see all kinds of stuff going on here. Um, there's going to always be some featured stuff. And then also you have your menu over here and your search in order to find new power ups. Now, I already have dash cards added to this board, as you can see right here. So in order to go into the power up itself, we're going to come down here and we're going to find dash cards and click on settings. Now, one quick note here, if you see up here a couple of power ups with a toggle next to it, that's not actually enabling or disabling that power up on your board. It's just going to make the button go away or be shown, right? So you've got this button right here. If I toggle it off, it goes away, right? That's all. So it doesn't actually impact whether or not it's on the board or if it's doing its actions. So going into dash cards, let's come down here and click on settings. And then we have a couple of options here. This is where you would disable it, or you could remove your personal settings or view the power up. And what we want to do is just view the power up. Right. So as you can see, Dash Cards is created by Trello. And even though there are a lot of fantastic power ups that are not created by Trello, it is great when you find a good one that is because it tends to work a little bit more natively with Trello and, and just a little bit smoother. So I always love that. So anyways, dash cards, as they say here, is a new type of Trello card that helps you keep track of what you and your teams are doing. This works across the board that you are on. It can also work across multiple boards. So if you're someone who's looking for a way to see perhaps how many tasks are assigned to you in a workspace, this is a great way to do that and display it on your primary board that you check on a regular basis. And we're going to use that as our example here. And you'll see when we do it, it gives you a much easier way to navigate to those cards as well. So it's it's really quite handy, actually. So there's a couple of different ways that you can use it. Uh, you can track by label, assignee, list, all of that. But we're going to go ahead and use the assignee option for this example. Because I do think this is one of the most common ways that people will kind of start to dabble with a power up like this. So let's let's just start there, OK? So we're going to go ahead and click on the track button. And this is going to pull up our dash cards uh, little quick menu. Now, these are standard card templates that they give you. You can customize and create something all of your own, but I have found that they really have honed in pretty well on the templates that people are more likely to need. So you can see right here what we were just talking about, assigned to me on all workspace boards. So this is already what we want. So let's go ahead and we're going to actually click on customize because I want to take you behind the scenes of this card so that you can see how it's set up and how it works. If you just wanted to keep it as is, you would just hit track and it would create the card and start doing its job. So we're going to go ahead and hit customize. Oh, and you can see, by the way, just before we even hit customize, these numbers here, these are actually based on real information right now. So this is what literally what information your card would give you based on what it's looking for right now. So what this means is there are three cards assigned to me on all of the workspaces within the same workspace as the board that I'm on. There are four cards due this week. There are 15 unassigned cards just on the board that I'm on right now, right? So this is, this is all real live information. So let's go ahead and customize. 
And this is where you can change the name of it. So if I just wanted to call it um, my to-do list for the week or something like that. And if you wanted to change the background, so they already chose a photo that um, you know looks fine, but if you wanted to change it, you wanted it to just be a color or you wanted to pick a different photo, you could do that. So let's just for fun, let's just go ahead and choose that one. You can see what criteria it's using to come up with this number here. So it's looking at any board, but keep in mind when it's talking about any board, it is assuming that you're, you only have one workspace. That is one of the limitations of dashcards at this time is that it does not look across workspaces. So if it was looking across workspaces, this number for me would be much, much higher. So right now we're inside of my training workspace. And so you're not gonna see the number of the real tasks that I have uh, on tap for the week. So just keep that in mind that this is only looking at one workspace. So ideally the tasks that are assigned to you are all living in one workspace, or you have a board like this in different workspaces under different work streams that you can go and check and stay on top of what is on your list. So you can choose any of the boards in the workspace. You can choose any particular list if you wanted to. So if you only wanted this to be your to-do list of like, for example, social media posting, and that lives in multiple places within this workspace, you could choose the lists that you wanted it to pull from, okay? So that's how that works. And then assigned, of course, it's gonna be assigned to you. We can put a due date label, and then they have some more filters here too. Um, there's just a couple, and these are custom based on custom fields that I have added into a specific board. So um, like these two aren't gonna show up for you because they're custom fields of mine. But if you did create any custom fields, they would show up for you here. Okay, and so then we're gonna go ahead and hit start tracking. It's important to note that it always drops the dash card on the first list. So even if you're creating one based off of the, um, the option of in this list, it's gonna drop it on the first list and you have to drag it over. And when you drag it over, it's going to readjust. So if it was on this list right now, it would only be counting these two cards, but if I moved it over here, it would automatically count these cards, okay? Unless you, when you're tracking it, when you're customizing it itself, you can say which list, and in this case, the, in their template version, they've said same as dash card. And so that's why it would behave that way that wherever you drag it, it would automatically uh, start recalculating. But if you had had chosen, for example, the on the go resources list here, even though it's gonna drop it over here, it's gonna be counting this list. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so now let's go into, we're gonna go ahead and drag this over to current week projects. So when we click into the card, now we can see what those three things are automatically it adds this section, this dash card section, and it shows you the specific card that is assigned to you. You can see the title of the card here. You can see its due date. Now, obviously these, these are, like I said, my training workspace. And so these are were created a long, long time ago, but we can go ahead and actually click directly on one of these. And it's gonna automatically take us to that card, which is super, convenient, right? I mean, what an easy, easy way to navigate around the different things that are assigned to you without having to go and search and find them. Because as we all know, sometimes our boards can get a little bit overpopulated and it can be difficult to find the specific card. So this is a super handy way to be able to just click straight onto it and go straight to it. Conversely, you can also, if you don't want to leave this page, you can also just right click and open in a new tab as well. And then one other thing, so we've got this little note right here showing the first three of three matching cards, explore and edit. So let's just look at that real quick. So this is going to open up our dash card kind of back end. It's going to open up our kind of report, if you want to call it that. And so from here, you'd be able to actually export this. So let's say you had a really, really long list and you weren't going to be inside of Trello. You needed to export it into some other format. Or maybe this is something where you uh, want to be able to pull reports on your employees or your VA or somebody like that to be able to see what tasks that have been assigned to them across the entire workspace. Um, so you'd be able to do that by 
by hitting the export button right here. And then of course you can update, you can get rid of some of these columns if they're not necessary, all that kind of thing. Just like you would be able to in any kind of Excel spreadsheet type situation. And then we've got our metric here and here's where you'd be able to kind of change this if you wanted to. Wouldn't really make sense to change this to anything else in this particular case. And then history and alerts are both requiring a uh, premium Trello in order to use those. So I personally haven't found them to be necessary yet, but if you want that additional functionality, that's how you get it. And then you could also just clone this and uh, change the assignee so that you would have this kind of thing for each member of your team. So that's one way that you can use the dash card power up, but I hope that it helps you see the capability and just how powerful this little tiny tool can be. Not to mention, it looks kind of cool on your boards when you can add those pictures or um, different graphics and things like that to make those cards really stand out. So if you liked this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated or overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. Mm -hmm.